Welcome, everybody. I'll do my best to uh, project right to the back. Can you hear? OK. <laughs> I feel a bit tremulous uh, standing here by Blake's grave with a dog collar on. I think he might have been appalled, but my only, uh, my only saving grace is that perhaps he might have thought that if anyone should be a priest, it could be a woman. I walk, past, I walk past the place of Blake's baptism every day, many times a day. It's the ornate font at the west end of St. James Piccadilly, where I'm rector currently. It's decorated with the riotous marble carving of the 17th century carver, Grinling Gibbons. And I think he carved a premonition of a Blakean Adam and Eve leaning, holding up the font, somewhat lasciviously, up against the tree of life. It's something that gives me huge pleasure every time I walk past it. As we've heard as a baptised adult, Blake was viciously critical of the corruption and indolence of the church of his day. As a prophet and visionary, he was able to tear into the doctrine and practice of a church that to his mind had lost touch with the prophetic and visionary Jesus, preferring instead its compromises in an unequal society where the poor were ignored by church and state alike. We've heard too that that voice is much needed in today's church and today's society. There are two aspects to prophetic imagination that I find in William Blake and particularly in the poem London which I'll read as my contribution to this gathering in just a few moments time. Two aspects to prophetic imagination. The first is anguish and fury at the present. Deep anguish at the injustices petty and otherwise with which we're surrounded today as Blake was. Nietzsche mentioned that to live is to be unjust. We can't seem to help it. But born out of that anguish is also our capacity for imagination of a better world and a new society. For me personally, in this poem that I'm about to read, it's the phrase mind forged manacles that has traveled with me. We shackle ourselves too easily with locked mental manacles as immutable as iron ones. We efficiently and comprehensively solder the bars of our own prison walls by our own self-limiting beliefs and our habitual repetition of the mantras that we live by. We are afraid of being free. And so I wonder here at Blake's grave, what are my own <coughs> mind forged manacles, forged in the furnace of my own fear? What would Blake say today about the melting ice caps or banning the burqa? Would Blake be on Twitter? I want to be always listening as I walk past that font every day for a Blakean voice to cut through the marble men who so often populate our church and state. Unlock my mind and commit myself as both a Christian and a priest to listen to that prophetic and critical voice and never be afraid of the darker deeper, messy and compromised recesses of my own mind that once unlocked can set me and others free. London. I wander through each chartered street near where the chartered Thames doth flow and mark in every face I meet marks of weakness, marks of woe. In every cry of every man, in every infant's cry of fear, in every voice, in every ban, 
the mind-forged manacles I hear. How the chimney sweepers cry every blackening church appalls, and the hapless soldier's sigh runs in blood down palace walls. But most through midnight streets, I hear how the youthful harlot's curse blasts the newborn infant's tear and blights with plagues the marriage hearse. Thanks be to Blake and thanks be to God. Wow. <laughs>